right now we're in Boulder and we are headed. There we go. 55 minutes, no traffic. Let's hit it. Getting out here is always fun and difficult. The last time I was out here was in the Raptor. I've been out here in the Jeep as well. And the main problem is it's just a ton of these twisties. So like that wasn't even a bad one, but you're basically doing these 10 mile per hour if you're lucky turns. That said, I got a fresh haircut. We're going camping. So I don't think the day could get much better. So the road basically just switches to dirt and then you're on this for a little while before turning into the reservoir and then you have a few miles on there. Did not change the suspension. So we're still in three right now, which is really for highways, but it's actually riding really comfortable. Um, this is just kind of packed down dirt. Not too bad. We're gonna switch to one as soon as we get to the reservoir. Don't know that we're gonna air down. We might a little bit. Depends how crowded it is. It's not too technical, but I don't know if we're gonna hit snow or not. And so if we hit snow, airing down would have been smart. Uh, I guess it'll be a game time decision. Well, that's a bummer. So sadly, there are seasonal closures here and I thought I checked and I could have sworn it was open, but it looks like that is not open. I do have a backup plan because those spots could have also been full. It's a much easier trail. It's not as hard as gross, but basically gonna head to, I'll call it a secret spot over in Ned, which I don't think is too far. And uh, that one's definitely open because I was there in December. So let's head there. We'll have some fun. Right now we're going through the town of Ned, which is awesome if you've never been here. Cool little spots to grab food, grab drinks. This is close to where we'll be camping, but a really cool area outside of Boulder. You should definitely visit if you're ever in the area. We made it. The next question is, are there any camp spots left? Which we will find out soon. I uh, hope there's a camp spot. The big problem with this spot specifically, which I've encountered before with the van, is height. So there's a lot of trees here, and sometimes, you know, you just gotta stop, turn around, because you can't keep going unless you wanna lose or become a convertible van, which frankly, I don't today. So uh, fingers crossed. Now I did actually see another van leaving as I was coming in, which is uh, kind of mixed opinions there. I've gone out this way before to certain sites. I see some tents. I think we're gonna try this way, which are different sites I haven't been to before. Someone managed to bring a couch out here, which is kind of incredible. In terms of difficulty, as you will see, nothing too bad. Bounce around a little bit. Last spot coming up and is this a spot? It's weird because there's a lot of things like this, but I don't think you're technically allowed to camp there even though I really want to. Well, the title of this video might quickly be uh, Camping Fails because, dang, there's some spots I can pull off on, but you're only allowed to do designated here and I am not gonna, you know, it's just respectful to follow the rules. So that's what BLM land is for when you just want to adventure, which I did not do today. Um, we got one more shot up here. I can turn left to where I've camped before also. The thing is I'm just seeing a ton of traffic out here right now and a lot of people leaving. So I'm guessing they're all full, but you never know. I'm gonna roll a dice. Well, in a funny turn of events, this is actually the spot I camped at for the first time when I got back to Boulder with this thing and there was a lot more snow. It was completely stock at that point. I got stuck in the snow, if you guys remember. I think we're leveled off. We'll double check that we're level, but let's camp it out. You know, it's pretty sad, but I'm seeing a lot of trash. So we're gonna do a quick cleanup. See this stuff? I'm not even gonna show you guys the last thing I need to clean up because let's just say it requires a shovel and it's frustrating seeing this stuff, but I don't know, you just gotta do better. So I'm just trying to leave the place better than I found it. Hopefully a lot of you have the same mentality out there, um, but yeah, clean up after yourself. We all wanna enjoy nature, so let's not leave trash for someone else coming the next time, regardless of how you're camping. Thank you. 
Sometimes I swear this dog will intentionally loop herself as much as possible just so I have to come hang out with her. You leading the way this time, Hayes? You know, a big part of me really wants to take the van through this. So right now we're kind of half just hiking, burning some of her energy, and then half sight scouting. There's actually a Site 9 back there, which looked pretty good. And it wasn't really near or visible to anyone, so I may end up moving. I found some deflated tents behind my site pretty far, and I don't know if there's actually people camping there, if they just left stuff there. Given all the trash I found, really not sure. So I think we're gonna keep walking for a little bit and then figure out if we uh, move spots or just hang out where we are. I even intentionally threw up the drone for a little bit to try to scout different spots. Now it's hard to tell because I don't want to fly too close to them right in case people are there and I just can't see them, but that was another option that we tried earlier. Meanwhile, this view is just incredible though. All right, so final decision here. If Camp Spot 9 is still open on our walk back and no one passes, then I'm gonna go ahead and steal it. Um, it's kind of near an RV, which makes me nervous about generator noise at night, but they didn't have anything running right now. The lady was friendly, so we'll see. I think it's a better spot than where I'm at. I don't fully understand what it is about me, but as soon as I see a spot that's a little bit harder to get to, I'm like, I gotta get there. It's kind of right near that lady. Um, she was a little friendly, a little weird. She was kind of like screaming at her generator because it wasn't working. She got a little frustrated with her dog. She she was friendly. She petted my dog um, and eventually corralled her dog. I hope it doesn't come running over to us later in the night, but I can see like three other sites right now from here. So I just want to get to a little bit more secluded spot and hopefully I don't have to hear generators all night. Site nine, here we are. I just wanna do some quick scouting, make sure we're in the best spot. It looks like I could all even go back here if I really wanted to. One fun thing I have always had struggles with with the van is getting like as level as possible. I don't know why in the Jeep I never really cared that much, rooftop tent and you're not inside of it, but when you're inside of something that long, you're sitting, you're laying, like not being level just drives me crazy, I don't know. And normally I wouldn't have been picky about spots like in Moab, you're camping near a lot of other people. They're all super friendly. They wave, they say hi. It's just out here, it's clear. A lot of people come out here to actually live. And for some reason, I don't know, I just want to get as far away as possible and try to like hang out and just enjoy nature. So like evidence of just kind of people throwing trash away, which is pretty terrible. There's clearly someone living over here and I actually got to give them credit. This is a pretty dope setup. So in here, they've got this little nook. Clearly someone was living in here and set this all up. They got a little fire to keep them warm at night. Trees, branches. In terms of living off grid, they knew how to do it correctly. Let me just say, um, I'm curious that probably a sleeping bag, hopefully, or there's someone just living out here enjoying nature. But this is the spot we got and I'm happy now with it. We're close enough that people will see me here and know it's occupied, but we're far enough away that we're gonna see very little traffic later once it gets dark. And so this is the reality of sitting in nature when it's cold out. I don't know, like part of me wants to maybe go out and go hike. We got to hike in earlier. It's kind of cold outside. I don't really think I should feel guilty. If I was at home, I might just be sitting around. Out here, it's like at least I can enjoy nature a little bit. I can go outside, get some fresh air. And I'm not just surrounded by electronics, although I am filming on a camera right now and I have my cell phone with me and we have a cell phone booster. But I mean, that's the conveniences of van life. I've got nature at my fingertips. I've got the conveniences of home at my fingertips. You're just blending two of the greatest worlds. If it was a little bit warmer up here, I think it was 50 in Boulder today. It's right now about 40 where we're at. So, you know, it's it's not uncomfortable, but at the same time, I'm so over winter and I'm just ready to get back to warm weather. Super excited for Baja this week. Should be a great time. We're bringing the pooch. We got temp tags, temp registration. I was a little bit nervous about that, but everyone I've talked to says that we should be fine. With that, we're gonna hang out for a little bit, enjoy some more nature, and I will update you guys when we're cooking dinner.
way it is. And my favorite thing, and this is why we have the air fryer. You know, I gotta say, the air fryer decision may have seemed stark, polarizing. Yes, I spilled one. You may not have that. Wait, let it cool down first. But it is the greatest freaking thing ever. So yeah, we're gonna be keeping it pretty mellow. Um, aside from the dog you can't see right here, just going nuts right now, because I'm holding a steak near her. Filet, fries, palm frites, whatever you wanna call it. Um, delicious. One of my Australian buddies a few years ago taught me that mayo and fries. It's not for everyone, but it's actually pretty good. And so I'm kind of hybriding that and I'm doing Thousand Island. And Thousand Island and fries is actually pretty solid. Maybe I'll show you the projector setup I've been working with. Um, it's kind of sad. I feel like I should be enjoying nature, but once it's dark, it's dark, especially when it's 40 degrees outside. You're not really wandering out. So let me show you my entertainment system here. Now I mentioned these in the last video, but these are my floodlights now, which I gotta be honest, are just incredible. So I had to put them on 100% for this video just because otherwise they're flickering. But being inside the van, the thing is the windows are tinted, so everything around you is dark. Now granted, I don't wanna leave these on all night, but for the time being, it lets me see around the van, lets me feel safe. And then if I'm actually off-roading, I'm reversing, I'm trying to navigate, it gives me great visibility 360 view. But it's mostly for camping for these lights specifically, like it's when I wanna just chill out and still be able to see around the van. So they work perfectly for that, as you can see. You know, it's funny, there's always a reason why I incorporate those scenes into the videos, because one, it helps transition, but two, these are the realities of van life. The breaking down, the setting up, the covering your windows at night, the removing them in the morning. Um, I did not expect to see the amount of wind and snow that I am right now. Fortunately, this was a one-nighter. We're headed back to Boulder. I've jinxed myself numerous times throughout the week. I kept saying to everyone I saw how I thought winter was finally over because looking at the forecast, it was 60s, 70s. I don't think it was supposed to get below freezing. Icing on the cake, I've done this like three times now. I forgot my hot water heater to make coffee. I can use my pots and pans, which I've done in the past, but honestly, I'm only about 45 minutes from Boulder. I'm probably just gonna drive home and make coffee as soon as I get home. All right, folks, and now, so we are headed out. I just wanna say a big thank you again for following me on these adventures. I won't run through all the things, but if you like the video, hopefully you know what to do, and if you wanna see more of these, same thing. Always a lot of fun. You guys motivate me to go out and try stuff. Any questions, seriously, comments, leave them below. Any ideas of where I should go, what I should do. The next video is 100% gonna be back to Baja. So we are headed out down there and that'll be a ton of fun. It'll probably be at least two videos, uh, maybe just one, who knows. Anyway, it'll be a lot of fun and I am ready for the warm weather. So I can't thank you enough again. And as always, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you next time.